Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, speciation. This topic was suggested by Rebecca Petfan, Amandeep Rai, Evelyn Hristova, Katie Finch, Harry Jones, Ali Dawson, Anna Gardner and Hannah Baker. Thanks guys. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. The different exam boards have different expectations about what you should know about speciation. If you're doing the WJEC exams or you're doing the OCR 21st century exams, then good news, neither of those specifications mention speciation once. If you're doing any of the other exam boards, then you'll need to stick with me, but actually the amount of detail which you need to know on this topic isn't all that great. Also, before we go any further on this, it's important that you understand evolution by natural selection. If you haven't already watched my video on it, then you can just click here in order to see the differences between Darwin and Lamarck's theories of evolution and what the commonly accepted ideas about evolution are now. Remember, random mutations to different alleles are constantly giving changes and variation to all sorts of different characteristics in any species, including our own. Speciation relies on that random mutation and that random change over several generations of different species. So, imagine you've got one simple species, and to make this really, really simple, what I'm going to do is make up a species. Here we've got a really simple, basic species, and let's say it's living in a temperate climate, the kind of climate which we get in Europe, let's say. Where our species lives, it's not too cold, it's not too warm, it's got a light covering of fur, it's got some body fat, and it's adapted for sorts of temperatures in the range of, say, 10 to 20 degrees Celsius, and it's surviving quite well under those circumstances. Now let's imagine that there is some sort of big change to its environment. Let's imagine that its population is suddenly split in two down the middle. So let's assume that it's something really dramatic, like a big tectonic shift and two tectonic plates suddenly move apart. As this happens, let's assume that one of those plates starts to drift further north and becomes colder, and the other plate starts to drift further south towards the equator and becomes warmer. All of a sudden, these two populations of our original species are having to deal with very different habitats. And of course, some of them are going to be better adapted for those habitats than others. Let's focus on the ones who've moved further north for a start. In our northern species, evolution by natural selection is going to tend to select for the animals which have more body fat and longer fur. And so they're steadily going to, over several generations, they're steadily going to end up with more and more body fat and more and more fur to help keep them warm. Now the opposite is true for the animals which have moved further south. Further south, having more body fat and more fur on your body is going to be more of a liability. And so those animals which have moved further south are steadily going to lose a lot of their fur and lose a lot of their body fat. And so eventually, over several generations, from one initial group of animals, you've ended up with two species which are quite different. At GCSE level, the question of whether or not you're dealing with two separate species comes down to a question of whether or not individuals from those two groups are capable of interbreeding with one another and having fertile offspring, that is, offspring who can have their own offspring. This is a fairly simplistic definition, and it's not 100% true, actually, as it turns out. But again, at GCSE, that's all you really need to worry about. Sometimes you might get distinct species which are capable of mating with one another, but their offspring will be infertile. A good example of this is if a horse and a donkey mate, they will have a mule. That mule is incapable of having its own children. Likewise, a lion and a tiger can then give birth to a liger, which again will be infertile. Over time, all those small changes to our two imaginary species are going to add up. Bit by bit, they steadily get more and more different from one another. And it takes lots and lots of generations, hundreds or even thousands of generations, before these two groups of animals are no longer the same species. But eventually that does happen. A good counterpoint to this is our own species, humans. There are, of course, differences between people from different parts of the planet or people whose ancestors were from different parts of the planet. 
But someone whose ancestors are from Africa is perfectly capable of reproducing with someone whose ancestors were from China or Europe or South America. It doesn't really make that much of a difference because we're all still the same species. So it's going to take an incredibly long time for these two separate groups of animals to become completely different species. And it's important that they remain separate for that whole time. This is known as geographic isolation. Speciation by geographic isolation requires that your two populations are incapable of interbreeding with one another during the time when that speciation is taking place. This is why our own species is actually just one single species, because we're pretty good at getting around, we're pretty good at getting past obstacles, and we're pretty good at interbreeding with other members of our own species from different parts of the planet. This is why we are still one single species. But if you imagine species who are as good at getting around and who find themselves, for example, trapped on an island in the middle of the ocean or separated by new mountain ranges or a river which has changed course or sea levels which have risen, then you start to get really noticeable speciation by geographic isolation. Remember, the key thing here is that your two populations are incapable of interbreeding with one another. Now, geographic isolation is a really good way to make sure that that happens, but there are other reasons for this. If you're doing the OCR Gateway Science course, then you need to be aware of at least a couple more. Firstly, there are reproductive choices. Individuals are free to choose which other individuals they want to reproduce with. Now, in some very basic species, actually that doesn't really happen very much. But in any species that's got a relatively developed brain, then they have things like courtship displays and they select their mates. When they do that, they may be selecting for particular traits over other traits. And some individuals may select for one particular trait, other individuals may select for another particular trait. And over time, you end up with speciation happening as a result of that. The other reason why speciation may happen is kind of similar to geographic isolation, it's that individuals spend their time in a particular part of a habitat. So they're all still sharing the same habitat, but let's say that some individuals spend a lot of their time in trees eating fruit, and other individuals spend a lot of their time on the ground eating insects and earthworms. So long as those two groups of individuals stay separate and don't interbreed with one another for long enough, steadily they will become separate species. And so just those little differences in an individual habitat can cause speciation as well. Even when the two individuals may be capable of meeting one another and interbreeding, they don't because of which part of the habitat they've chosen to live in. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the SAP quiz. The link is right here and it'll also be in the description along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.